What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's episode, the most efficient cubic miner is not a Ryzen CPU. It's a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor in my Samsung S24 Pro. And today I'm going to teach you how to install a cubic miner on your Android phone. But before we get into the content, you know the drill. If you find this kind of content valuable, smash that like button for me. And if you haven't subbed already, please consider doing so to stay up to date on the latest mining news and tutorials. So special thanks goes out to Millerman7 in our Discord for sharing the news and providing some valuable instructions for setting this up. If you are not in the Discord, link down below. You may be getting this information later than you could. Now the thing you have to keep in mind with Cubic is Cubic mining isn't traditional crypto mining. It secures the network indirectly, incentivizes AI training, both CPU and GPU mining are relevant, and it is ever-changing for every epoch. And recently there's been some changes, so GPU mining was pretty good whenever I picked it up, but then quickly they changed with the next epoch and CPUs kind of took over at that point. But there's some key differences between some of the CPUs that are available. For example, some will only work with AVX2 as opposed to AVX512. Now, if you are looking for a list of CPUs that are AVX512, when it comes to Ryzen, you don't have a whole lot of choices. It's basically everything on the new AM5 platform, or of course you have your newer Threadrippers as well. But the Threadrippers aren't all that efficient at Cubic, and you do have some Intel options as well. Uh, the Xeons have approximately 49 that are AVX512, and then the Core X only has 18. And the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 mobile platform is a vastly different chip than you're going to find from something from Ryzen. It is on a 4 nanometer node and it boasts up to 3.4 gigahertz on the clock speed. So the efficiency right now is drastically different as compared to a Ryzen CPU. Now this is subject to change depending on what AI training models they are running. So just something to keep in mind before you run out and start buying a bunch of phones to mine this. Now as of right now, it looks like Hashrate.no has actually removed Cubic from the CPU profitability list. And that's not surprising considering this is hard to keep up with. It changes every Wednesday with a new epoch. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of speculation and some calculations on our own here. Now according to Cubic's Discord, it looks like a 7900X and a 7900X3D are getting around 110 iterations per second as of the new epoch. Now, I assume that's probably around 140 watts or so, so we're just going to run with those numbers and see what it looks like. So we're going to say 110 its at 140 watts. And you're looking at $2.29 per day at $0.10 cents per kilowatt hour. That would be $1.95 after power. So you're spending about $0.34 cents in power per day. Now, if we compare that to what I'm getting on my phone, you're going to see a really drastic difference. Uh, it's hard to say exactly what the average is because I haven't been mining it for that long. But at peak, I saw about 37 its, and it looks like it settles out somewhere between 25 and 35. So let's just go with 30, and we're going to change this to 5 watts. So we're looking at 62 cents a day in revenue with 1 cent a day in power. Now earlier today when I ran those calculations, I was actually sitting at 70 cents a day in revenue and only 1 cent in power. But of course, difficulty is going to fluctuate as well as price. But if we were to go back to the previous all-time high, you're looking at at least a dollar a day on a phone. Now, in my case, it is a pretty significantly newer phone, but I think that the efficiency question has been answered. Okay, so with all that out of the way, we can get to the point of the video and the reason that you're here, and that is to learn how to set this up on your phone. Now, all you need to do is get your Android phone, pull up Google, and search for the term Termex. Now, you could potentially install this on Google Play unless you have a newer version of Android. In my case, the first time I pulled this up and tried to install it directly from Google Play Store, 
uh, it told me that it was not compatible. So depending on which phone you have may determine how you need to go about doing this. Now if you do have a newer version, then you're perhaps going to want to utilize something like F Android. And F Android is a great tool to be able to install third party apps without having to go through the Android store. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down until you see download F Android and just click on that. And once you've finished installing it and you launch it, you're just simply going to hit the little search tool and then you're going to type in Termex. Now the Termex that we are looking for is the Termex Terminal Emulator with Packages. Once you've installed that, then you simply open it and you are ready to go. All right, at this point, you're not going to need my verbal instructions. You can just follow along on the screen, but there's a couple of things that I want you to be aware of. Number one, all of these commands I'm going to leave down in the description below, but I emailed them to myself so that I could simply copy and paste them directly from my phone. And that made things a lot easier to make sure you don't mess anything up. The other thing to be aware of is you probably want to change your wallet address. Otherwise, you're going to be mining to my wallet. And hey, I won't stop you, but you probably don't want to do that. And then lastly, at one point I got tripped up on what to answer yes and no to. I'm certainly no expert when it comes to Linux, so we'll kind of slow things down there and I'll describe that in further detail. Okay, so this is the part that I got tripped up on. So it asks here, the default action is to keep your current version. It's asking you to answer either yes to install the package maintainer's version, or no, keep your currently installed version, show the differences between the version, or Z, which would be start a shell to examine the situation. Now, initially I answered yes the first couple of times, but it was like an endless loop. It kept asking me over and over. So at that point I started answering no to try and get through it. And after answering no a few times, it did in fact go through.
so at this part you'll notice that I'm not copying the entire wallet address with this context I'm adding the first part then going back to my email and finding my wallet address now typically when you're mining with QLI you're simply going to be using your address ID instead of your wallet address but in this particular case you do have to use the full wallet address and it does have to be all capital so just a heads up and that's it that's the last step and you are done and you are mining so congratulations if you've got your phones up and running on this hopefully it works out very well for you and we're going to wrap up right here but before you go do me a favor if you haven't already hit that like button if you haven't subscribed already this is the time to do it and I will see you on the next one.